as round one continues. We're in heat number five. Felipe Toledo, current number two on the Jeep leaderboard, takes on Colohan Dino and local wild card, former pipe master, maybe the hardest wild card to ever have out here at pipe, Jamie O'Brien. Got to make sure you've got priority when they come through. That's right, seeing a little wave pop up. Jamie O'Brien took a look at one before. It was a point three, and looks like O'Brien's going to head back door, driving around a section. This one's not going to open up. He'll kick out. Now let's hear from Michelle Barres, who's with Peter Mill. Number 23 on the championship tours in this matchup as we watch Jamie O'Brien lock in. Pulls into the first section back door and clamps on him and takes him down. Jamie with the only one with a few chances in this seat. He's just been looking at those rights incomplete in three waves in a row. Jamie back then was already switching his stance in the tube, already deemed to be one of the best wild cards ever. And he took down all the biggest names of the sport. At this stage, we were going, okay, Jamie O'Brien is the best surfer here at Pipe Point. Yeah, well, the most adaptable, you know, whether it's backdoor, whether it's pipe, he's got that ability to take off natural and come out goofy. Just feeling really comfortable in at home. I mean, it's his backyard, so. Now looking at 20 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock, Jamie O'Brien with a few scores. He's the older surfer in this seat, already into his 30s. Just at 20 years of age, Felipe Toledo got a wave during that recap. Yeah, beautiful barrel right there. Not a clean exit, but, you know, everyone, everyone was saying how this is Felipe's weakness. Now, he made the quarterfinals here last year, so he's no slouch when it comes to uh, surfing backdoor and pipe. You know, he's just got to get himself on the right waves. Once he wraps his head around, I mean, this kid is super talented. And with that talent, we'll come in, you know, I mean, he's still young. He's only 20 years of age, still working it out. Beautiful barrel right there, 5.17. So he takes an early lead. Now back to the lineup with Toledo. Just gunning through the pocket. Speedy little left-hander at Pipeline. Good for a couple of moves off the top, and he'll fade out. Toledo's opener at 5.17. O'Brien still with those three incomplete scores. And Dino sits with priority scoreless with 14 minutes remaining. Here, where you see the fanning camp cheering him on. What do you think about this wave, Potts? Oh, you know, not a, not a deep barrel, but you can tell he's starting to feel it. He's starting to, uh, you know, find his groove. And that's what you've got to do out here. The more waves you ride, the more familiar you become with it. That drop starts to feel a little easier. You know, the positioning in the barrel, you start working everything out. You know, it's just time out here. And these guys don't have a lot of it. You know, when there's uh, free sessions happening, very hard to get a wave like this for a traveling professional unless you're a, one of the boys from here or, or have a world title under your belt. But for Felipe Toledo, he would have been battling to get a wave out here in his warm-up session. So this is kind of, he's just working this wave out as he goes through this heat. So you can tell starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. And each and every wave he catches, he'll, uh, he'll start getting more and more familiar with it. Um, you know, taking him, <clears throat> taking him down at his own game, you know, in, in waves of consequence when it gets big and perfect, you know, here we go, Felipe up and riding. Toledo now setting up this section. He's going to have to get out of the way of the lip. Still riding, he'll just step off. So checking a wave out, that's his third attempt. Meanwhile, Andino's still being patient. And, you know, that's just due to the fact that he spent so much time out here. So, you know, you command respect when those things happen. Now Toledo locks in, grabs the rail, pulls up into the open face. Not a tube there, so he's out. We have Strider on the beach. What's the energy like anticipating this next matchup, Strider? Stronger, but uh, this is right up his alley right now. And uh, unfortunately not in the race this year, so look forward to seeing him back. That's right. Now paddling hard is Jamie O'Brien. He'll catch up to this wave, grabs the rail, sets this one up, looks to slow down, gets nice and deep. And he'll come out of this one without a problem. A celebration from the fans and himself getting the completion. And his best wave so far with five and a half to go. 6.44, Joe. That's what he needed. Could, <laughs> could be, right? <laughs> exactly. Let's take another look. Yeah, you can see the GoPro on the nose of his board as Jamie, that traditional grab rail slide. And he, you know, he's got that ability to be able to slow down and speed up at will. That one felt good. Not super deep, but a critical drop and then straight into it. So, you see that shot from the drone there. You can see that technique that he uses. Lays back into the water, then leans forward to regain that speed. He's just got that thing on tap right there as he drags the body, pulls that rail up. You can see him lifting that board literally with that hand. Getting that extra point of reference there to keep that board moving. 
slowing down, speeding up. Now he leans forward. Why? Because he's got to sneak out at the end of this thing. He did that absolutely perfect right there. So Jamie O'Brien's best way by far. You see the celebration from the local boy. Always had that free surf type role, even with the jersey on. Wanted to kind of be in that same group as guys like Dane Reynolds. It didn't really change their surfing when it came to a judging criteria. Kaloe having a look. Is he going to use his priority? Here he goes. He's paddling. Making a move. Needs an 8.06. Locks into a beautiful pipe barrel. Spits him out into the oncoming section, but he'll hang on. So waiting almost the entire heat to get a start, but he needed something in the excellent range. Jamie's best is 7.33. Which one are you liking better, Potts? I think Jamie's going to get the nod on that exchange. As we see Toledo needing a 2.9, here he goes. Toledo locks in a smaller little pipeline wave and he'll get barreled. He comes out in front of Andino. Lofty little backhand float. Wow. And he'll stomp it on the inside with 35 seconds to go. Smart move right there. Judges don't mind those combinations. Now looking like we're into the countdown. O'Brien paddling hard, but the horn will sound. This one is not in time. O'Brien will grab this one and take it into the beach where the judges already with their heads down, calculating those last couple of scores. And Dino's only riding that heat a 6.5. This is the crucial wave to turn it. What do yeah. you think? Nice little tube. I mean, it's if he gets it, it's just only just. It could come just under. I mean, it could, is it a 2.5 or a 2.9? I mean, let's have a look again. As he drives in, nice little tube right there, comes out. And then this is, I, I think if he hadn't have done this, I don't think he would have got it. But if he does get it, it's only going to be just, Joe. I guarantee Mick Fanning sitting out the back listening. <laughs> Scores come in from the panel. He needs a 2.9. It's a 2.67. Not enough. Felipe Toledo will have to deal with round two at the Billabong Pipe Masters. As Jamie O'Brien, the wild card, moves straight into round three. It doesn't get any closer than that. A split decision from the panel.